now we're going to hear from you in the audience um, to hear what you think and any questions or comments you have. Hi, my name is Haynes, and I actually have two quick comments, and then I do have to start by saying I didn't see the ad because I don't have a television. It was sent to me in a link, and I did not see it on YouTube, but I ride the train every day and now see the ads on the train. So my first comment is, what's interesting is I love the smoking ads. Um, as an HIV positive man, I actually like these ads in print. I don't know if the tone that everyone is talking about in the TV ad, I get from the print. And the other thing that I want to mention as an HIV positive man is I'm always confused when I hear that stigma happens when we have an ad that tells the truth in a certain way. Well, I actually am a spokesman. My picture's actually right outside. And I don't find anybody beating me up because people know I'm HIV positive. Yes, people are not going to have sex with me when they find out I'm HIV positive, but that's going to happen anyway. It's not an ad that does that. So I'm always, so I guess the one question I have is, what is the stigma part? What happens when we tell the truth and then someone positive, what is the backlash from that? Where, where is the stigma part backlash? Thank you. Does anyone uh, want to respond to the question about the stigma? <coughs> I can't, I wasn't on the panel, but I <laughs> Why don't we just keep going to audience members then? Okay. Um, I'm Bill Baldwin. I serve on the uh, NYU ACTG Research uh, Committee, uh, Consumer Advisory Board Committee. Just and spell out that, that, those letters. Just say what they mean. ACT. ACTG is AIDS Clinical Trial Groups. Uh, they are the international network of uh, research protocols to find better treatments for people with HIV. They've been responsible for developing almost all the drugs that we take. I'm positive for 27 years now myself. Uh, and I'm still alive, still kicking, and still fighting for us all. Uh, I, we, we viewed this ad at our uh, community advisory board meeting uh, this past Wednesday. Uh, and people in our community advisory board were outraged uh, and very upset uh, about this ad. Uh, on a scientific level, uh, one of the things that we keep hearing uh, from every one of the speakers is honesty. We don't see the ad as being honest. It doesn't reflect uh, what happens to someone when they become HIV positive and they take their meds. It's, it's even if the ad is, even if you take, even if you take your meds, this is what's going to happen to you. Your brain is going to dissolve. Your bones are going to break, and uh, what's the third? Thing? Anal cancer. And you'll get you know, <laughs> you're twenty times more likely to get cancer. These are statistics that are not borne out by fact and research, and it's not what's happening. Uh, this is something I, I think. If you, I'm not too worried about scare tactics as much as I am concerned about the honesty of the ad. And I, I think it's very important that our campaigns be honest, that the people who view the ads can trust them and, and learn from them, not just be scared. Uh, because I, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done. It's gotten, it's gotten people's attention, attention in the activist community, in, in our social communities to some degree, I would think as well. But have we learned anything? Have we progressed any further? And uh, I'll end Thank with you. that. We have, we have a little statement. To that. Thank you. Um, and just one other thing, I was looking at your statement, and the other concern that you, another concern that you raised was <clears throat> that the message might uh, inadvertently be conveyed that, it, that you know, taking your treatment isn't going to help you, or there was a concern that this might lead people to think that taking, taking their HIV meds doesn't, is not going to help keep them healthy. So if you could just address that. Uh, I just want to address the scientific uh, accuracy of it. The, the campaign does not say 
that all of these things will definitely happen to you. It speaks to one's increased risk for being diagnosed with certain conditions, and uh, that we, will be, we would be happy to share a reference list with you of all of the different, uh, the different articles from which uh, this information was drawn. Furthermore, um, the, the ads were shared with many, many different physicians, including many infectious disease physicians, who provided comments on the uh, scientific accuracy of the pieces. And so uh, I just wanted to counter the claim, or the, the, uh, the claim, first of all, that it was suggesting that every single person who uh, acquired HIV was going to have these things happen. It really speaks to an increased risk for diagnosis. Similarly, with the uh, tobacco campaign, that the campaigns that the Department of Health has launched and shown, there's an ad that shows a woman who has a, a condition called Berger's disease and some other things like a tracheostomy from smoking. This does not happen to all smokers, and that is not the intent of uh, showing those things. It's to let people know what some potential consequences could be and that there's a way to avoid the consequences, the potential, potential or possible consequences of those things that are more likely to happen to you or more possible to happen to you, uh, you're at greater risk for, uh, and there's a way to avoid it. So that is what I would like to see. Okay. Um, oh yeah. So um, I just want to say that in the reports that are outside on the table, there's one on uh, gay men and HIV, and um, we actually have some data in there about anal cancer and about osteoporosis. And what was the third issue? Dementia. Oh, dementia. Yeah. I think we have a little bit about cognitive uh, dysfunction. <laughs> uh, actually, that is more covered in this report on aging because both osteoporosis and cognitive dysfunction are. Uh, more prevalent among, among the people living with HIV for many decades um, than among you know, younger people. Um, and anal cancer is very rare, but actually, um, I think the stats are that uh, if you're HIV positive, you're 20 times more likely to get anal cancer. And if you're a gay man who's HIV positive, you're 30 times more likely. That said, it's a very rare form of cancer. So the number of people getting it is just a few thousand every year in the United States out of like 300 million people. So it, it's a very rare, and, and the chances of you getting it are very low. I, I, re, I reviewed the documents that, that, you, that you cite and, and that's been passed around through the internet. A lot of that data is old data, and, 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 and it being very rare, the figure 20 times more likely is misleading okay. than, than, than shedding light. Thank you. Yes. Oh, hi. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Kelly Terrell. I'm the news editor at thebody.com. Just really glad this has happened tonight. Hi, It's my old boss. Um, so I just want to say two things. I think if you know me and you know my work, you know I hate this ad. Just want to put that out there. Um, I think one of the things that bothers me is that we're talking about, you know, we look at these PSAs and the numbers keep going up. Well, I don't think anyone in this room believes that PSAs are going to make the numbers go down. And I think it's insulting to say that that's going to make a difference. I think that fear can make people think about their behaviors, but it doesn't necessarily change the situations that they're in. Hi. So, so if you're homeless, um, an ad telling you, you know, you need to use condoms. What's wrong with you? That's not going to change their situation. That's not going to change. Uh, a young gay man who's been sitting in church for the past 20 years being told you're an abomination. Fear is not going to change that. That's not going to change your situation. I think that if we know anything, we know that HIV fuels off of having a lack of options. And fear only works for people who have options. And I think that this is why this PSA is so problematic and so stigmatizing. You know, for the, for the man who said he didn't see the ad, I'm not gay. I'm not a gay man, I, clearly. But I was stigmatized by it. I think it's the way that the men looked. They looked embarrassed and ashamed to be gay. Their Thank eyes you. were not just molesting, okay. sharp, just molesting. And the one thing that I just want to say that I noticed that people didn't, didn't talk about was 
You know, why has HIV fallen off the radars? No one here is saying, you know, we can't do it by ourselves. Where is the conversation about where the LGBT movement is involved in this? I have to say that they're playing respectability politics in straight America. That HIV is not a priority for them. They are not pushing H they are completely pushing HIV away from their agenda. If we were to stop on the street five months ago and ask someone, tell me what DOMA is, they know. Ask them what PrEP was five months ago and they couldn't tell you. Thank you. We need to have a conversation about it. Thank you. Anyone? Um, it's not really a response, but just kind of to jump into the frame of thinking that Kelly was just talking about. So, um, yeah, I think it was Daniel that was talking about, well, if you scare people, then you have to give them something. And um, that's another point that I, I missed to, to say earlier. Um, you know, we scare them with this ad. OK, I don't like that, but you did it. Now what are you going to give them? And you say, use a condom every time. Just say no to drugs. I, I don't know what that is. I don't know how that works. And you scared me, and now you didn't give me anything to actually act on. Not that I'm a marketing genius. I think that's not my thing. I'm an editor of a magazine. But literally, I just came up with this. How about condoms are your best protection? Or something like that. I mean, just flip the switch. I mean, something. Um, anything. <laughs> not condoms every time. And just to add on that, <clears throat> my, my research and, and my daily work is with young gay and bisexual men, primarily young gay and bisexual men of color. Um, and I do both uh, interviewing, I do you know, the sort of survey data collection, and I also do pre and post test counseling. And you know, information shortage is, is one problem. Uh, there's many, many people who test regularly and have no idea what the window period is and have no idea how that applies to their sexual behavior, which is a problem because people are most infectious when they're in the window period. So people can have a negative result when they're actually highly capable of transmitting the virus to somebody. So uh, you know, we see a lot of men who are young men who are repeat testers, but they're not getting that information. I think that's important. And I also, you know, on the skills piece, um, the negotiation component, right? These are young men. Uh, you know, they have, there's a huge spectrum in terms of where they are with their sexuality, how they feel about it, what they've been taught about it, what they, the messages they get from their surrounding environments about it. Um, and noticeably absent is any sort of, I don't want to say training, but any sort of discourse about how we encourage young men to talk about sex with each other and to negotiate condoms or to negotiate their sexual practices, right? Sex is not a fully cognitive act. It's not. A plus B equals C in a linear process. Uh, it's about relationships. It's about connection. It's about disconnection. It's about pleasure. Uh, and we need to we need to involve that in the discourse about young people's sexuality. Saying use a condom every time, it's a good message, but it tends to ignore the other ninety five percent of sexuality. Yeah. Uh, I just want to remind folks, try to keep your question or comment to one minute. Thanks. My name is John Nelson, and I'm a nurse practitioner with Wichita Age of Teenagers. And um, the reason